Hey you, Bravo's now in Canada. I just got chills. If you know Bravo. I love that. I love love that. that. You love that. You know. Vanderpump Rules. Why does it have to get so complicated? Summer House. Don't activate me because you've not seen me activated. Below Deck. I'm not your friend. I'm your captain. Top Chef. Hi, Chef. And Housewives. <gasps> Definitely Housewives. I'm not going to lie. I'm looking forward to this. Bravo. Now available. This is safe. Subscribe now with your TV service provider. Fall in Canada has never been hotter. Frequency Podcast Network. Stories that matter. Podcasts that resonate. Every economist on edge. Fine living costs. The real estate market is showing an erosion. Canada's economic struggles. Value of the loony against the greenback. And rising unemployment. Canada's economy is sliding dramatically. I'm Jordan Heath Rawlings. This is Today in This Economy, where we keep you informed on what the latest economic news means for you. Navigating this economy has never been more confusing or frustrating, and we're here to help with that. Today, I want to talk about some upcoming changes to the federal mortgage rules. If you haven't heard about them, our guest today will walk you right through them and explain what they mean for you. And that would be Angela Calla, an accredited mortgage professional and author of The Mortgage Code. Hello, Angela. Hello. How often does a government update its mortgage rules? When's the last time it happened to us? Well, we haven't had government rule changes like we've recently had since 2012, but I do find there's a federal or provincial modification at least once a year within some level of mortgage or housing. What exactly did the federal government announce this week? Maybe start by giving us the broad overview and then uh, we'll get into the specifics of what it means for people, which is why we do this. Yes, certainly. Uh, So going back to where we started, we haven't since 2012 had any changes to insured mortgages. Insured mortgages allow Canadians to make a purchase with less than a 20% down payment by paying an insurance premium to get into the housing market. And up until December 15th, 2024, that cap was a million dollars across the country. That has now been changed to one5 Five million dollars, which is a significant cash flow assistance for someone who's looking to get into the market. And if they were looking at buying a home at, say, $1.2 million previous to this announcement, they would have had to save $240,000. Now that same borrower only needs to save, provided they qualify, $95,000. So there's $145,000 cash flow savings. So if you're qualified, if you were on a savings plan and that hurdle for you was the $240,000 down payment, that has now been eliminated to get you into home ownership sooner. So that's the most significant change because we haven't seen a change in that in over a decade. Now, obviously, it has its pros and its cons, which we can get into, but uh, the down payment uh, reduction will certainly help some Canadians moving forward. So that was the biggest change. But there's a couple of other ones, right? There certainly is. Uh, the other one being that first time home buyers can now have a 30 year amortization. Now, let me tell you this, Jordan this is not the longest amortization that we've had. I've been doing this for two decades. We've had 40 year amortizations insured, and it wasn't just for first time home buyers, it was for any home buyer. So, this is not the end of the spectrum of where we could go or where we may be able to go based on where we've been. And with that in mind, this really helps the competition for the Canadian marketplace for the final aspect, which a lot of Canadians aren't aren't really paying as much attention to. And this is for mortgage renewals. Back in 2016, talking about government changes that we see all the time, homeowners uh, were subject to something called the stress test. And what it did was make sure that you qualified for the mortgage that you had with a 2% higher interest rate than what you'd pay. So let's take a look back, Jordan. If you were up for renewal back in November 2023 and rates were 6.5%, and now you have to stress test at 8.5%, that really minimized your options as a Canadian to be able to shop your mortgage if you couldn't qualify, right? To do so uh, based on a significant higher interest rate. So now if that mortgage is insured, one of the most under-reported, uh, I would say, aspects are is that those those mortgages 
won't be subject to the stress test. So Canadians can have a little bit more ease knowing that they're not stuck with their existing lender and go out and get that better interest rate. Because insured mortgages, due to the liquidity of the banking system, provide the lowest interest rate because it's the the best uh, liquidity for the bank. You mentioned that uh, the new rules regarding insurance up to 1.5 million have positives and negatives. Can you break that down from the perspective of somebody looking to be a first-time homebuyer uh, who hasn't been able to get in the market yet? For sure. Well, you know, you can't ignore you're taking on more debt for longer, right? That's the negative. So if you're looking for something negative, there it is. I don't find it a negative. I feel that the sooner that Canadians get into the marketplace, the richer and wealthier they are. You can break it down. You can look at it any way you want. But the best way to get in the market is as soon as you possibly can. And then, of course, there's other Canadians who are fortunate to get gifts from mom and dad. But this will help those who are working good jobs. They're they're out of university. They're out of college. And that hurdle of that huge down payment has just getting smaller. Now, Jordan, do you know why we have insured mortgages in, in Canada? Do you know how they were developed? No, explain it to me. So after World War II, the soldiers came home and we were in a place where Canadians needed security more than anything. They came home from the war. It was stressful times. And they needed people to own homes, but there was no way that people could save money to own a home. So what they did is the government came out and said, okay, well, instead of needing 20% down for that, you know, $5,000 home that you're going to buy, we will have you pay an insurance premium and you can buy that home with the 5% down payment. And so you can realize the um, security of home ownership sooner. And so once you came home from war, you got a job. Within a few months or years, you were able to get into a home right away. And so that's why it was uh, originated in the first place. And then we got competition in our marketplace as the decades proceeded. And so this change today is consistent with the very reason of why homes are available to purchase with a smaller down payment in the first place. You mentioned that uh, for a lot of people, it's important to get in the market now as soon as they can, even if that means they're paying more money for longer. Uh, when we look at the market right now with interest rates coming down, and I know more cuts are expected, and with what we've seen in Toronto and some other places, uh, a lot of uh, first-time homes, particularly like condos, sitting on the market – should people really feel that urgency to get in right now, or uh, might there be some benefit to waiting and seeing what happens to the market next year? Well, Jordan, next year when rates are lower, more people will qualify to buy. So you're saying just get in the market now, even if it means you're potentially spending more at this moment because prices are relatively high. Well, but there's no indication that they're going to be going down. It's all about supply and demand. And so until we're building an oversupply, we're going to be in the same predicament. I remember back in, you know, this is not a new thing. Mm -hmm. This is something that everybody at every time, there's never been a time where it's been so easy to buy a home and you could just wake up and, and have your, your options and everything was easy. It's always been something that you've had to modify and plan for. And, you know, in addition to these changes that we've had, you know, there's the introduction of the new first-time home savers account. They've increased the RSP withdrawal amount. So, yeah, I, I can tell you this, Jordan. If you rent for another month, how much of your rent payment is going to go towards your own equity? Fair enough. Um, what about from the government's perspective? Why would they make these changes now, and when do they take effect? They take effect December 15th, 2024. And they've made these changes to be reflective of our current marketplace and to safely attempt to stimulate the market because they're not giving this away to you for free. You still have to qualify for it. So they're not saying get into something that you can't afford. They're saying we understand the down payment can be an obstacle. So here's a way that we're doing this to try to help you move forward uh, with that. So this is something, Jordan, that the government was actually talking about back in 2019. And with the events of 2020, it had been put on the back burner 
And now it is time to look at what are some safe opportunities where the government can help people with the biggest obstacle, which is the down payment, but still qualify them to be in the marketplace. So it's it's balancing, attempt, attempting to balancing some of the items in the marketplace based on the current snapshot of where we're at. What kind of impact do you think they'll have on the market as a whole? Well, everything is relatively positive now. We know that the worst is behind us. We know that interest rates are coming down. We know that we have increased opportunities with the introduction of the first-time home savers account, the increase of the RSP withdrawal limits. We've increased the cap on insured mortgages. So we're working on a plan together to help Canadians get where they want to go, especially if home ownership is is in that plan. How would you prepare now um, as a potential buyer to be able to take as much advantage of both these changes in the market as a whole uh, once they come into effect? It's very easy. You just start with a start with an application. At our mortgage brokerage practice, we have a financial services division that can help people open up the tax efficient accounts to make sure that they're getting all the grants and tax efficiencies for their down payment to go as far as possible, as quickly as possible. So starting with that plan and learning exactly what you need to do to get to where you want to go. If you want to buy a, your first place for 500 k you need to save 500 bucks a month for four years. You know, so you can re- reverse engineer that several ways, you know, and depending on who's listening and how old you are and what your living circumstances are, 500 bucks a month might not be a lot for you to save. It might be too much. You might say, well, I need to do it in two years if I want to. So double that. It's a thousand bucks a month. You might say, I want to buy for a million, double it and have that four year plan. So if you break it down in what it means for you, then you're going to get ahead. Also, you know, we have apps that are available for infotainment when without obtaining a credit check or verifying all your income. So kind of having those basic understandings of where you stand and where you need to get to to reach your goal will get you there in a very specific period of time based on the numbers. You know, we've talked so far um, about how these changes will uh, help people get their foot in the door, uh, quite literally, of their house. Um Will they impact the number of their average monthly mortgage payments? The less you put down, the higher your mortgage payment is. And so you will only qualify for these changes if your income allow you to do so. Uh, but the with real estate appreciating, I mean, uh, the numbers that we use when I'm instructing for the real estate board or the numbers that we're using when we're doing estimations for clients is we say about 4% appreciation per year, right? Does this mean you'll pay less? Absolutely not. Does it get you to your goal? Yes. And we only recommend, of course, and you will only qualify if you meet the criteria available from the lenders and government that is in place with these policies today. But it's not going to be less expensive. And I would caution any Canadian that everything in life only gets more expensive. So we need to prepare for that accordingly. Last question then, as uh, you've heard and seen the the conversations around these changes over the past week or so, what's something you're not seeing understood as well as it could be in sort of the popular discourse about it? I feel that those coming up for renewal can take a little bit more of a, a breath of fresh air because if they've entered the market in the last five years, it's been a really scary time. And You're really nervous about what's coming up for renewal, but I can assure you, you have options. And utilizing an accredited mortgage professional, we're here to be unbiased with you. So if sticking with your existing lender is in your best interest, then you're going to get that reinforcement and, you know, not feel like you've had to go through a sales pitch or or how do I present myself or, you know, do I say the right or wrong thing? So know that the mortgage professionals, the independent mortgage professionals in Canada, that's what they're licensed and obligated to advise you. But if there is another option out there, you certainly don't want to leave it on the table. And I would say that with seven out of 10 Canadians living paycheck to paycheck, the biggest thing holding them back from right sizing, moving up the property ladder is the debt outside their mortgage. So at renewal, just don't look at the interest rate. Interest rates are coming down. If you're working with an accredited mortgage professional, they're going to do a full look back prior to closing to make sure that you have the lowest rate that's available to you. But they're also going to take a look at things like your outside debt and see what the financial benefit to you 
would be by consolidating that in. And each and every day in my office, we're saving people $1,600 a month, $700 a month, $3,000 a month. And then they're able to design a different financial future for themselves just by taking the existing debt that they have and right-sizing it and turning the tables on the lenders and getting it in the best plan for them. Angela, thanks so much for this. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. Hey you, Bravo's now in Canada. I just got chills. If you know Bravo, I love that. I love that. that. You love that. You know Vanderpump Rules. Why does it have to get so complicated? Summer House. Don't activate me because you've not seen me activated. Below deck. I'm not your friend. I'm your captain. Top Chef. Hi, Chef. And Housewives. <gasps> Definitely Housewives. I'm not gonna lie. I'm looking forward to this. Bravo now available. Insane. Subscribe now with your TV service provider. Fall in Canada has never been hot. 